Hello again, and welcome back to the Hobby King New York studio. Today I've got a product profile for you on something that's pretty cool. We release a lot of products at Hobby King, and sometimes something that's totally worthwhile may slip through the cracks. I think this is one of those items. This is the S500 multi-rotor airframe combo. Maybe you guys got one of those little ready to fly quads out of the box as a Christmas present or something like that. And you're starting to get a little bored with it. You've flipped it, you've flown it around your house and you kind of exhausted its possibilities. That's where something like this is really, really cool. This is everything you need to build a 550 size proper multi-rotor hobby grade right out of the box. You can add a gimbal to this thing. You can do a lot of other stuff. It's totally cool. Basically, you're gonna need this kit and a couple other items to get up in the sky. You're gonna need an orange radio. In this case, right here, I have our orange T6 in our handy little Turnigy transmitter case. This is our kind of our company radio if you're using around the shop here. Really a killer unit, inexpensive, works great, 10 model memory, gotta love it. Also, a 615 receiver, basically a park style receiver, not a super long range thing. For starters, the way we're gonna set this up, this is great. If you moved on, you wanted to do like aerial video and stuff later, you'd want a different receiver, but this will work for now. And additionally, a battery. Good old 2200 3S Turnigy Nanotech pack is all you're gonna need to fly that. Basically this stuff right here and this box and you're off into the sky. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing out, show you what comes in the kit, then I'll build it. By the magic of video, we'll do our little time-lapse thing. I'll throw this thing together. If I come across something particularly interesting, I'll point it out. Otherwise, we'll just get it built and do some flying. So what's in the box? We open this thing up. So first we have our FR4 fiber reinforced plastic frame kit. This is a really good fiberglass type material. It's the same thing the little rotor bits accessory pieces are made from. We have landing gear feet, nice tall feet. So if you decide to use this thing with a gimbal or something later, you're already set up to do that. These are the arms. Now, uh, old criticisms of this type of quad were that these arms are very flexible and very bendy. These are super cool. They have an in-molded carbon fiber reinforcing spar to make them nice and stiff. Probably the best of this style of arm that I have seen. <clears throat> A couple of booms. These are gimbal rail booms for mounting underneath the frame. Voltage alarm, handy little 3S voltage alarm. This just plugs into the balance tap of your main flight battery and basically beeps and blinks at you to let you know that your battery is getting low when you're in flight. This here is the QQ Super Flight Controller, the QQ for quadcopter. This guy comes uh, right out of the package, should be preset and ready to go. It does come with instructions for setup and tuning, but supposedly we won't need to do any of that. Check it out, see how it goes. Power distribution cable. This is an XT60 cable. It goes to four sets of cables for ESCs and motors. ESCs, of course, these are 15 amp Turnigy multi-star ESCs. These are the V2 multi-stars that come pre-flashed with BL Heli firmware, which is absolutely awesome and super, super stable. Bag of my favorite thing in the entire world, green zip ties, well not green zip ties, but zip ties in particular, but these are green and they come with kit. <laughs> uh, here we are, this is a little bag of accessory parts. This is going to put together the underneath frame that carries the battery as well as the gimbal on the bottom of the quad frame. Velcro and straps for your battery. It's a very complete kit, it's pretty impressive. And of course here, multi-star motor sets. Now these are a pair of matched multi-star motors along with two props each. This is super cool because you get spare props in addition to the regular props. So if you should be flying this thing and you crash it out somewhere, you will actually have extra props ready to go. Uh, this being your first hobby grade quad that you've built up or put together, you probably will crash. So it's kind of nice that they've included that stuff. Two of those in the box. That's gonna do it guys. That's it for what comes in our friendly little kit here. Set that aside, stop on some time-lapse, get to building, let you guys know if I come across anything particularly scary or any interesting things about putting this together. Guys, there you have it. This S500 went together really, really fast. Actually, I've gotta say I'm really impressed. The drawings here that they give you 
for assembly are very accurate and easy. They actually have labeled the uh, screw types for each step right here on the directions. So you can very easily go through and verify that you've got all the right stuff. Couple of quick notes. Do make sure that you put your motors on correctly. They tell you clockwise, clockwise on this diagram to show you which way they should be. I had to reverse two when I got done with the assembly because I realized I had a couple of them on backwards. Other worthwhile notes on this guy, the flight controller that comes with this thing, this Thunder QQ is actually pretty darn cool. Uh, it's basically like a KK that's always in self level. So it just comes on, it's auto stabilizing and there's a single knob for adjusting the gain. Don't worry, I'll show you what that's about later. The important thing is on the front here, there's a set of dip switches right here in the front of the copter. Now these little dip switches allow you to set the position. It has I4, X4, and then the same thing for hexacopters. In this case, you need to make sure it's on X4 and it also lets you adjust for your receiver type. Also very cool, this thing supports the little satellite receivers for DSM-2 or DSM-X, as well as S-Bus for type receivers and standard receivers. I've gone with the standard receiver because the unit comes with the cables for that and it was the easiest to set up. There is a process described in the manual for binding the satellites if you choose to go that route, but I haven't done that here. Now, uh, pretty much that's it. It's assembled, it's ready to go. Turn the radio on. What's this little thing? James asked me what this was for. This is actually a little voltage alarm. Plugs into the cable on your 3S battery and makes an incredibly loud, annoying noise. <laughs> uh, that'll tell you when your battery's low when you're flying. And this nice, nice strap they've given you. This thing is slick. Gives you room. Strap your little alarm right to the bottom of your battery so everything's good to go. Battery tray here, and like I said, gimbal rails. All this stuff is adjustable so you can set the balance. Very impressive. Now, plug it all in together, turn your radio on, and plug in your copter. And it sings to you. That's it. Oh, oh there's the rest of it. Aha! So, it sings to you, and this light in the middle goes solid green. That tells you that everything is dialed and things ready to go. Now, there's two things left, real quick, I have to do before we fly. One of those is to calibrate the accelerometer. If this was a KK board, you'd go into a menu, push a button. That's not how you do it here. Here it's done with a stick. Now, all of this is described here in this little arrow diagram looking section at the bottom of the controller, or the bottom of the manual, I should say. Um, but basically, I'm gonna show you right now. To calibrate the accelerometer, if you look at the top of this guy, you see this green LED right in the front with an arrow pointing forward. Conveniently enough, that tells you which way to put this thing on the copter, so you know which way forward is supposed to be. Also tells you what's going on. Right here it says to adjust sensor. That's what they mean by calibrate. So you're gonna push your throttle all the way up and all the way left. That little light will turn off. And you're gonna wait a second. Do -do -do -do. And eventually it flashes and comes back on. That's telling you that this is now calibrated and it knows what level it is. You have to do that or else when you take off, it's gonna wanna drift in a direction. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna take this thing over here and set it on the ground and take off a little and show you how this gets adjusted and also how to confirm that everything's going in the right direction. Let's go do that now. So guys, the first thing you wanna do or one of the things you need to do is verify that the controls are all going in the correct direction on the copter. You don't have a screen or a layout to test that with, so what you wanna do is set this thing down, go ahead and arm the copter and don't quite take off, just give it enough throttle where it's still sitting on the ground and nudge the sticks and make sure it moves in all the correct directions. Okay. It's probably really, really hard to see on camera, but you can, when you're standing here, you can see that the props, the correct props are speeding up or slowing down and you can hear what's going on. These are moving in the correct direction, so it's safe to take off. So I'm gonna take off and show you what happens if the gain is too high. When I first lift off, you're gonna notice some vibration. I'll show you how to tune that out. This copter comes with a tiny little screwdriver just for adjusting the gain. On the top of the copter here, there's a convenient window left in this top panel so that you can get to all of these controls and adjust the switches and the knobs. I'm gonna stick this little screwdriver in the gain knob to make adjustments. It just very smoothly turns up and down clockwise to increase, counterclockwise to decrease. <clears throat> now, if this is too high when you take off, the copter is gonna have a fast oscillation, which I should be able to demonstrate right now. Watch yourself, Alex. So, 
That's not a good noise. <laughs> that means that your gain is too high. You notice both the throttle response is too jumpy and also the copter vibrates down a whole lot. The easy thing about this controller is to make this adjustment is just that one knob. So you're gonna go ahead, turn that gain knob down, just small adjustments at a time, take off, watch for the oscillation, land, repeat the adjustment. Say that again without the copter running? Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, that's a whole lot more stable already. Let's take it outside a little while, have more space. We'll fly around, see how it really goes. Guys, one more thing I forgot to mention before I fly real quick, check it out. This thing has standardized rails on the bottom for a gimbal. So if you want to add like our Q2D gimbal or Q3D gimbal to this unit, it's very easy to do. And it even includes a little JST lead off of your power adapter to power either that gimbal or some LEDs. Again, very impressed. Flying! Hmm. That's worth noting, by the way. Much like a multi wee copter, as soon as you arm this thing, the rotors start turning. So if your even when your throttle is closed, when you arm this copter, your props are spinning a bit. Be aware of that and make sure there's no one around before you start or arm the copter. Alex. <laughs> so there you go. Hands off. It's a little breezy back here, so it's drifting a little, but right out of the box. So a little adjustment on that little calibration knob. And this thing is a champion. Wow. So guys, like I said, if this is like your first copter after your uh, you know, little ready to fly guy, just really perfect. Really, really easy. Easy to put together. Puro's like a champ. I am really, really impressed. I'm gonna keep saying that a few more times to make sure it sinks in. <laughs> Very confidence inspiring right away. Like, really, really, really stable, easy to fly. Great power, wow. <laughs> uh, no vices to speak of just yet. Like I say, it comes with that uh, low voltage alarm. Even in the cold like this out here, I'm guessing quite a few minutes of flight time. I will test that and let you guys know in the comments to this video so you don't have to sit here for the next 20 minutes while I fly the pack out. So I guess the one thing this copter doesn't do is crazy flips and other things. If you're after a super acrobatic copter, this maybe isn't the best choice, but this is a very, very solid rig. If you want an inexpensive building experience, you want to get something you can fly right off the bat and you want to shoot some video, this is a serious winner, guys. Not much more to say about that. Very impressed, very, very cool. Very inexpensive way to get out there. Everything comes in one box, minus your radio and receiver. Really, really, really solid way to enjoy this hobby and to move on in multi-copters. Guys, even if you've built several after flying this, I gotta say, if you want a nice self-level, easy to use, inexpensive video copter, be hard pressed to go wrong with this guy. Check it out. <laughs>